Uh, my name is Saurabh Bharti, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional, and this is the platform where I come and share my knowledge and experience. Today, we are starting a new initiative, and this initiative is about collaborative learning. And in this initiative, I invite all the uh, all the learners or all the experts who want to share their knowledge and experience, and they uh, on my platform, they can come and we can uh, collaborate and uh, share the knowledge uh, with the wider audience. And as part of this, I'm starting a new series with one of the experts today, and this is about demand planning app. And this is one of the area where I wanted to learn. And so I find out the Gaurav uh, is an expert in this area, and he has recently implemented uh, this feature. So today, uh, guest speaker is Gaurav uh, with uh, us, and Gaurav is supply chain consultant for uh, for uh, for for uh, for almost five plus years. And he has got a good uh, domain knowledge also, domain industry experience for more than 12 years. Uh, this is his uh, contact details. So if you would like to connect with Gaurav, please do uh, follow him on LinkedIn and you can write an email to him too if you have any queries related to the supply chain. So uh, what how I want to start with uh, is that uh, welcome Gaurav. So possibly as part of this uh, session, what I would like to start with is the with a basic that how, what exactly is this demand planning from the business perspective, if you can throw some light on that before we get into any technical feature and the capability of this uh, D65. Over to you, Gaurav. Thank you so much for the, first of all, for the introduction. Thank you for introducing me as well. And uh, great opportunity uh, and great initiative by you, Gaurav. Thank you so much. And uh, today I'm be sharing my knowledge, as you, as you said, about the demand planning app, which is the Microsoft's next generation collaborative demand planning solution. So um, what is demand planning, if you have to say? So demand planning, too often the business rely on the outdated guesses, you know, old formulas leading to mainly two big problems, if, if I have to call out, and which is running out of stock uh, when the demand spikes or overstocking and tying up to the cash. Both hit the bottom line, or bottom line of any company. That's where actually the demand planning comes in. It's basically a smarter, more strategic way to figure out what products you will need, when, and how much. And instead of relying on the outdated formulas, you look at the real data sets like past sales, marketing, promotion, market trends to make the informed decision. And it is a very, it, my demand planning is not just about the inventory, but also it's a very vital part of the supply chain resilience. So now we have a very powerful tool built in as we are discussing today, which is the demand planning app from Microsoft. And yeah, let's get into that then. That, that's great, Gaurav. And also, I think what uh, to just to call out, I think it is not a specific to any industry. There are different industries uh, who can use this feature. So let's move to uh, what I thought, Gaurav, is to uh, we, when we start talking about this feature, I think it is good to establish a use case. And as part of that use case, I thought like we will have the USMF Contoso data and we will uh, establish that as a, one of the uh, problem statement where USMFA is facing, let's say, some challenges in the inefficiency in the demand planning, and they have the inaccurate demand planning, supplier lead time problem, manual forecasting, and the warehousing overlaid. So I think uh, overloading. So I, I think we will take this as one of the use cases for our future videos and use the data from the Contoso to, to show the demos to our audience. Now, what I thought is one of the good way to start with this is that we uh, also talk about the business process uh, for this demand planning. Uh, I really believe that uh, any solution when we design for our customers, it needs to be very business process centric. It needs to start with the process. So I have picked up uh, the business process catalog from uh, Microsoft Dynamics. And in this pr process catalog, we have the focus to plan business uh, process. And this is where I feel this demand planning fits in. And we have got a different stakeholder as part of this, which are your planning stakeholder, procurement, sales, uh, production, and inventory. I think most of the operational stakeholders are part of this entire process uh, journey. Right. Now, if uh, before uh, we get into exactly what capabilities this demand planning app offers, I think I would like you to bit explain about what is there in this new feature, which is not there in the existing capabilities. If you can throw some light on that. Sure. Thank you, Saru. So as as we are you highlighting already there, you know, the legacy demand forecasting, which which was which is existing in the FNO itself. And then there is the demand new demand planning app, which we are which we which are talking about today. So if I have to say that the legacy tool offered two options, one is copying pasting the demand, which is easy, any anyone can do. And then other is using Azure machine learning, 
but which is powerful, but it is, as you know, that it is very hard to configure. So I would say that the legacy demand forecasting, which we were, which, which we were having in build, it is great for basic forecasting, but it lacks the flexibility and collaboration. And that's where the new, enter, you know, the new demand planning app enters. You know, it's more, more modern visually, and it allows, you know, it is built for non-technical users with the no-code approach. And, and you know, uh, you, you have advanced forecasting mod models, uh, data from multiple sources can be used. And very importantly, I want to call out that, you know, the strong collaboration tools, it, it, it have co-pilot, you can use the Teams chat, plus you can also do the what if analysis, track multiple forecast versions, and edit forecast at any level, either it's, you know, individual SKU or at the wider company wider level. So essentially what it means is, this makes it a flexible, AI-driven, and scalable solution for business needing more than just basic forecasting. And we can, as, as you are compare, you know, you have very beautifully compared, you know, the legacy demand forecasting with the demand planning app, and which, which kind of like, you know, uh, we discussed. Uh, I, I talked about uh, its collaboration is there, different data sources it can handle, um, different pre-built models, you know, like best fit per profit, Arima, and very scalable and can handle the complex and uh, diverse industries. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great, uh, Gaurav, to know about the comparison between the existing features and the new one. So uh, so what we can do is uh, we can move to the next slide here. And I think uh, one of the things which, uh, uh, if you can uh, explain us that how this demand planning works end to end, what are the key steps we need to follow here? Right. So uh, this slide, as we, as we see, you know, explain the end to, shows the end to end process. Uh, there are there are a lot many more things which we'll talk about in detail, which is which is not here. But if I have to say the basic, uh, the basic and the key processes which are involved are these one. The first one is the import, which we can use many connectors, either the FNO or any other power by power power query providers. We import the data. If I have to say very in the in the very simple manner, we import the historical data, which is the sales data, or we can also uh, and then we transform the data, which is converting it into the time series, which is nothing but the you know, putting it on the X and plotting it on the X and Y axis. And once we have our uh, historical data plotted, when then we utilize it using the, uh, you know, the different forecast models and the algorithms which we talked about um, to create the forecast. And once we have the forecast, planner can go in, uh, see, look at the forecast, and if it is good or any adjustment need to be made, those are, those are done. Once the adjustment are made, the final forecast is ready to be utilized into the finance and operation through the data management framework. And as we know that, you know, that will be utilized in the, into the planning optimization or the master planning, which we say. So that, that's something very brief, sort of. Yeah. Thanks, Aurav. And I think that really helps. And this is how we are going to break up uh, our entire series as well in different uh, sessions. So I think just to call out, I think before the session, you helped me to uh, install this app in my environment. And that is how we are going to do this uh, in uh, for the future sessions. So some of the prerequisites, uh, just uh, to tell everyone is, that you need to have the version 10.0.38 or later. You need to have a, a, a premium license for this to use. Uh, you need to enable or install the demand planning app in the PPAC Power Platform Admin Center. And there are a couple of uh, 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 configurations which you need to enable in FNO to start uh, using this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm quickly going to share my uh, 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 screen on uh, for the finance and operations. So I think one of the thing I am into the uh, Power Platform Admin Center, and this is where uh, in the environment we can uh, have this uh, app available, uh, which is installed here. We can look at the version also, which is there. And if you want to uh, install this app, you can always come here in the dynamics, uh, I mean, in the environment and then install that. Uh, once that is done, I think we move to the FNO environment. And one of the first thing which we need to do uh, is to enable uh, the feature about this uh, 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 demand planning, which is this feature. And this is kind of a on by default in the recent version. If you are on 10.0.41 or uh, 42 or uh, any other recent version you are in. And I think once that is done, uh, what I remember, Gora, you told me is uh, setting up the parameter here uh, and enabling the URL of uh, your demand planning app here. Right. And uh, I think one of the few things you told me about some number sequences as well, right? Right, that is also one of the uh, important part because um, yeah, we can go to the number sequence and there is the one forecast sequence number, which we are setting up to the non-continuous uh, sequence. And here we are using the uh, reference of the micro MS Learn. You know, keeping the pre allocation is five hundred. Uh, as we know that we this is purely related to the performance because since we are going to be have you know the high number of the 
transaction will be higher. So to uh, meet meet with that requirement, it's it's always better to you know keep the pre allocation on and keep that number a little bit up. So yeah. so that definitely one one of the key key point here. Yeah. And um, coming to what also you was showing earlier, sort of the link. Yeah, you rightly showed that had the enter ID, uh, which which you already showed. And yeah, you can show the user how we navigate through the type. Yeah. And I think one of the last thing which is also important because you talked about the different steps of importing, exporting. So one of the thing is that refreshing the data entities, which is very important to uh, uh, execute this entire process. So you need to hit this uh, refresh data entity. Uh, right. as well in this so that you have all the related data entities uh, for this demand planning, which you are going to use for uh, possibly importing or uh, 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 exporting the uh, forecast and the planned uh, things in, into uh, FNO, right? So that's right. a couple of entities we have. Correct, because the demand planning will communicate through the data measure framework to the FNO. So yeah, what you are reflecting here, so you know, some of it, uh, uh, you know, will, will be demand forecast entries, demand forecast, and different out of the box side warehouse master data product we, we can we can use the data entity so so that's right sort of yeah yeah and one and of the thing very important that, part, yeah. yeah and one of the thing i think uh, the url which we mapped will help us in uh, by clicking in on this icon and have a uh, quick access to the demand planning yeah. app here and this is what our demand planning app looks like and I think we will stop here for today, Gaurav, and then uh, possibly we will start exploring each of the options available in this and all yeah. the steps which you have uh, spoken about uh, uh, about the demand planning uh, uh, in, in the previous slide, right? So we will uh, stop here and thank you for your time today and uh, helping me in installing and taking the first step and also giving a, giving a kind of a business context uh, uh, about this demand planning, why it is required. So thank you everyone for watching this. Uh, uh, and I, as I said, this is an initiative. If you would also like to do similar sessions like how Gaurav is helping and uh, bringing this collaborative learning together on this platform, uh, get in contact with me and then we can plan something together. So thank you and see you in the next one. Thank you everyone.